Fox 61 News at 5 starts now. Right now at 5, a crash landing. First responders are investigating after reports of a plane down. We have a crew live at the scene with the latest on the investigation. Plus, monkeypox has made its way to Connecticut. New tonight, how state leaders are reacting to keep the virus at bay. Hate speech impacting another Connecticut community. Racist flyers found in Berlin. Tonight, residents are reacting. And all sites are on this weekend's new London Sail Fest, but crews are raising concerns over having enough staffing to keep people safe. But we start here with breaking news. First responders investigating reports of a plane crash in Terryville. Thanks for joining us on the News at 5. I'm Ben Goldman. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. An 80-year-old man is injured tonight after his plane crashed in the woods in Plymouth. Fox 61's DeAndrea Turner is on scene near where that plane went down. DeAndrea. Well, the chief tells me that thankfully he's okay. He just had a few bumps and a few scratches, but he walked out of this. And he also tells me from where I'm standing, the plan, the plane is about 40 yards with 400 yards, excuse me, within those woods. And you can take a look at this picture. You can see that this plane is wrapped in the trees, half in the tree and half on the ground. The chief says that it also has about a 30 gallon fuel leak. They don't know if he was taking off or flying in when the crash happened. But the chief says that this isn't the first time in his tenure that a plane has crashed, but he's glad that everyone is okay. The last 30 years that I've been chief, we've had, I believe, seven or eight plane crashes. We um, saw him just about leaving the plane, so we knew we didn't need any heavy equipment or ladders or anything. So then we just assisted him out to EMS and away to the hospital he went. And we don't know if he's still in the hospital or hospital or not. But like I said, he did walk out with just scratches and bruises. And the FAA is on scene investigating how this crash happened. Right now, we don't know those answers. But when we do find out, we'll keep you updated here on air and online. In Plymouth, DeAndrea Turner, Fox 61 News. Okay, thank you, DeAndrea. And in other breaking news, first at uh, five tonight, the first case of monkeypox has been detected in Connecticut. Fox 61's Alicia Machado joining us live from Waterbury after learning more from health officials about this first case. Alicia. Well, the state's Department of Public Health says that a man in his 40s from New Haven County has the first detected case of monkeypox here in Connecticut. We're told that man is in isolation but has not been hospitalized at this time. Now, as for residents in Connecticut, DPH says right now the risk is low to contract monkeypox from this case, but they do expect additional cases in the weeks ahead as the nation deals with this outbreak. We have a vaccine that is able to protect people from it. And we in Connecticut are able to get vaccines for people who are doing the testing and also for exposures to people who've had close personal exposure to an identified case. Now, health officials say monkeypox can spread through close contact with an infected person for a long period of time. Some of those signs of infection include fever, swollen glands, and a rash. Now, we'll have much more on this uh, tonight on Fox 61 News at 10 and 11, including how officials are responding and more about how this spreads. Also, what you can do to protect yourself. For now, we're live in Waterbury. Alicia Machado, Fox 61 News. All right. Thank you, Alicia. Well, today, very cloudy day. I almost thought it was going to rain. I was outside mm -hmm. earlier with my daughter, and I thought, should we bring something for the rain? Right. A hoodie, an umbrella? Well, it looked like it. Right? It did, and nothing really quite uh, earlier today, but it looks yeah. like some showers are picking up. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us now, explaining why those. you said something last hour about those showers, even though we can see the green on the radar. Yeah. We're not seeing that play out outside. So there is some drier air below the radar beam. So below where the radar is, it's not lying. There is rain falling, but mm -hmm. some of it's evaporating before it reaches the ground. But as we head through the course of the night, eventually some of those raindrops are starting to hit and there will be a rising chance for some of those scattered showers as we head through the evening and through the overnight. And this rain, my goodness, is actually going to add to the humidity as we head through the next several hours or so. It's also going to turn more breezy. So put that in the back of your mind so you're not caught off guard. We're not expecting damaging winds, but just enough that you're going, ooh, 
that wind has really picked up. So Hartford area about to see some of those raindrops. New Britain, Avon and Simsbury. You guys have already seen a little bit of rain. It's not much, but we'll take what we can get. East Hampton and over Coventry. You guys are still dry. Manta Manchester rather still dry as well, but rain heading in your direction just a little bit. We'll take it right. Granby down through Windsor. Windsor. Winds are seeing some and we're also seeing some showers in North Brantford all the way down through the New Haven area. Now let's widen out and you'll see more showers off to the northwest of us. And this is where the steadiest rain is. Little pieces of that kind of break off and head in our direction. So we've got those off and on showers through the evening and I think they're around through about midnight or so. So this is eight o'clock and there are just a few kind of scattered showers that are out there 1130. But notice as we're heading towards midnight and after this is all clearing out. So we are dry by the time you wake up tomorrow morning. Right now in Hartford, we've got the clouds that have kind of thickened up a little bit. 78 degrees, the current temperature there. Mid 70s for the New Haven area. It was warmer earlier when we had a couple of breaks in the overcast. Now that the clouds have filled in and some showers are starting to develop, we're seeing those temperatures drop. But it is going to be a stuffy night ahead with the humidity in place, with those scattered showers. It's just going to feel a little bit moist through your home. Probably uh, it's an air conditioning night. If you have it, temperatures dropping back close to the 70 degree mark as we head towards daybreak tomorrow and then heading through the day tomorrow, we clear things out. So morning clouds break for sunshine. Temperatures at 10 a.m. are in the upper 70s. We'll see high temperatures in the mid to upper 80s with lots of sunshine, a very humid start to the day. But as we head through the afternoon, the humidity will slowly be dropping back. So even though it's getting warmer, it it will feel less humid by afternoon and these temperatures will be warm right down to the Connecticut shoreline, not just for inland Connecticut with a northwesterly breeze. If this is a little bit too warm for you, we've got numbers for you that you may like as we head towards the end of this week. A bit of a cool down. We'll talk about it. Your full forecast coming up in just a bit. All right, Rachel, thank you. We're following some breaking news tonight out of New Milford, a fire at the high school in town. New pictures of crews on scene just into our newsroom here. Officials say the call came in around 2 o'clock this afternoon. Flames could be seen coming out of the top of the school building. Five fire departments responded to this. The fire is still ongoing. No word if any injuries or a cause are involved in this. We'll keep you updated as soon as we learn more. Well, a seventh person has now died after a deadly shooting in Highland Park, Illinois. Investigators there are trying to piece together how a gunman was able to position himself above a 4th of July parade and then shoot into the crowd below. This video shows frightened people running from the gunfire yesterday. At least 30 others were injured in that attack. The suspect was taken into custody after a manhunt that stretched into most of Monday. Police say the gunman was dressed in women's clothing when he snuck onto a rooftop and used a high powered rifle to shoot at people below. Police say it appears the rifle was legally purchased in Illinois. The warning signs missed. The question was there's disturbing videos online that have been seen. Uh, we are reviewing those. Those are going to be a part of any investigation uh, efforts by our task force investigators, Highland Park Police. We'll look at them and we'll see what they reveal. Police say charges are expected soon against the suspect, and so far they don't know if there was a motive. President Biden signs a proclamation ordering flags flown at half staff to honor the parade victims. The flags will be lowered until sunset on July 9th. And in Philadelphia, two police officers were shot during Fourth of July celebrations. Gunfire causing the crowd to scatter and run for cover as those shots rang out. Authorities say a Philadelphia police officer assigned to highway patrol suffered a graze wound to the head. The bullet stopping in his hat. Another officer, a member of the Montgomery County Bomb Squad, was shot in the right <laughs> shoulder. Both officers were taken to the hospital where they were treated and then released. No arrests have been made as of tonight. And back here at home, new information tonight on state police enforcement on the roads over the 4th of July holiday weekend. In the new stats released today, state police say they responded to more than 6,400 calls for service. The special enforcement started July 1st, ended just before midnight last night. 50 people were arrested for DUI. More than 600 people were ticketed for speeding and another 40 plus for seatbelt violations. State police responded to nearly 300 crashes, 37 of them with injuries and two of them deadly. Well, it's being called a weekend of travel flight mares, nightmares in the sky. Thousands of Americans found themselves stranded amid a host of issues facing airlines. Fox News correspondent Charles Watson has more from Atlanta. I can't even get home now. I'm 
I don't know how I'm going to get home. And he's not alone. Thousands of folks heading out for the 4th of July holiday found themselves stranded at airports and hotels with staffing shortages and bad weather forcing airlines to cut service throughout the weekend. Since Friday, more than 20,000 flights have been delayed in the U.S. and almost 2,000 others canceled. It caused chaos at airports with passengers complaining of poor communication and major surcharges to change flights. Some say it was enough to make this the last vacation of the season. I had to get back to see family. I haven't seen them since COVID, so it really wasn't a question. We just had to do it, but we won't be going away for the rest of the summer. Despite the delays and cancellations, this was still one of the biggest travel weekends in years. Friday was the busiest day. Almost two and a half million passengers screened by the TSA, the most in a single day since the pandemic started. Experts say it demonstrates a clear need for airlines to regroup and reorganize, with consumer complaints against airlines up by more than 300 percent and demand for travel only expected to increase in the coming months. We're always dealing with weather issues, but this staff shortage and the fact that we don't have enough pilots, we're not paying them enough. That's poor management. Adding to staffing troubles, pilot strikes around the world, including Scandinavian Airlines, which filed for bankruptcy on Tuesday. In Atlanta, Charles Watson, Fox News. Back to Connecticut now, continuing to follow developing news out of Colchester. We do know at least one person is dead, another injured in a house fire. It happened on Cato Corner Road, and it's right near Prospect Hill Road in town. We have learned that the victim is a man in his 60s, no word on how the fire started. We're working to get more information from the fire department and from police, and we'll bring you updates on air, online, and on the Fox 61 News app.